Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about introduction to Oracle's memory structure. So, this is essentially the abstract picture of Oracle Server that we have uh, discussed in our last uh, couple of videos. That uh, a Oracle uh, database server consists of three things: one is a physical processes, the second one is memory structure, third one is file system. In our last couple of videos we have already discussed about how the file system looks like and then how you know what are different types of files and all this thing and in the in the next couple of videos we are going to focus mostly on the memory structure like how you know you know what what are different things that this memory structure contain and how to manage this memory and then how to tune this memory so that we can make our database run faster and perf and perform better so, so this is the goal of uh, next couple of videos. So, the memory structure that you you have you have seen here is uh, you know uh, what I'm showing here is consists of of three parts. The part one, so let's write it down. So, memory structure. The first one is called shared global area. Or in short, it's called SGA. And the next one is uh, called Process Global Area, or in short, it's called PGA. And the third one is called User Global Area, or it's in short, it's called UGA. Okay, so the shared process, shared global area is a big chunk of memory segment, big chunk of memory segment, which all the Oracle process can access at at, at any point of time. So that means whenever we uh, we uh, let's say like let's try to redraw the diagram, whatever we started before, like so let's say here is a listener. So whenever a client request comes, the listener is going to fork a process called dedicated server process, right? So this is a dedicated server process, and then again another client comes C2, and then listener is going to process you know fork another dedicated server or DS2. So let's say this is called DS1, right? So this dedicated server process DS1 and DS2 can access to this chunk of memory which is called shared SGA. Okay, so you know this one can access and this one can access and so on and also the database background processes like pmon smon they are they also access to this sga at certain point of time to do certain things all right so this is what is the concept of shared global area and next one is called process global area so process global area is something like whenever you write a simple c program right so let's say i write a c program something main and then int c and then you know something like that right so what happens is that this like whenever you run this program on your server or, or, or your or your machine it is going to take some memory in the RAM uh, on from your computer memory like you know this int C will be stored somewhere right so that is what is that that is called the process memory of this process of this C program as you know that Oracle is you know this dedicated server 1 dedicated server 2 these are all C, written on C so therefore the same thing is going to happen that these processes is going to take will consume some memory on the server and that memory is called program global area or PGA then the user global area is that like let's say this user C1 is going to open some cursor or this C1 is going to uh, write a select statement which is going to sort that means select star from EMP order by something or this uh, you know this C1 is going to give a group by uh, clause in the in the select in the query so in that case it requires additional space or additional memory on which it is going to do those sorting or it is going to fetch those cursors and all this thing so therefore that part is called UGA or this is users you know this is sessions memory or sessions memory right so whatever memory I need for my user session, those things would be 
you know reported as a part of your user global area or UGA so here is the uh, common thing so here is a uh, you know, summary that said as, as the name says that this can be shared across different processes whereas PGA is private to the you know the process and UGA is the private to the session or to the, uh, to the user sessions okay so if you understand this then let's go to this diagram in a dedicated server processes actually the UGA lies you know inside the PGA that means whenever like you know, in a dedicated server whenever the client C1 comes we are going to create a dedicated server process DS1 right and then that dedicated server process is only serving to this client so in that case what are you going to do we we combined the process stack space is taken by this D1 DS1 process plus the user's requirement you know if this C1 is going to do some you know um, you know some some kind of uh, order by clause or something then those things will be part of your PGA so essentially what you do UGA is a part of your PGA in case of a dedicated server mode and then here is another client C2 and that C2 has a dedicated server DS2 and we are showing the process PGA for that DS2 process and SGA is going to contain all those different things we are going to explain in detail in the next couple of videos about like you know, all the shared pool, db buffer cache and all this thing however in case of a shared server mode this UGA instead of lying in PGA is going to be the part of the SGA because as you see like in a shared server mode we shared like you know across different clients we shared some information like the request queue and response queue and all those things so those things instead of since those things are shared then what Oracle reports is that you know that time the memory of the UGA is reported as the part of your SGA alright so therefore essentially we have two things we have SGA or a PGA and this PGA like you know th these are the memory structure and then PGA and then is another thing UGA but UGA is a part of the PGA in case of a dedicated server mode in case of a shared server mode SGA contains the UGA and then we have just PGA okay. so this is how the memory structure is aligned and we are going to discuss more in detail about the intricacies of all these different uh, area of those memory structure in our next set of videos.